Hello, everyone. Okay, so thank you to everyone that has joined. Hi, just let me know where you're joining from. Let me know that, yes, I am live. So if you want to say hello so I can see your comments, just post a comment and I know that you are here. So hi, Doris. Okay, Martins, Martins Daniel from Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, Godwin Martins from New York, USA. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I think more people are joining. More people are joining from Instagram. I was live on Instagram. So I'm just going to be checking my comments here as well. Um, okay, so uh, yes, please let your friends know that we are live. So we're just going to wait for more people to join us. Guys, what do you think? What do you think? Hello, Timothy from Potakot, Nigeria. Tonight's session is we're really going to hit on a lot of topics, okay? So just be patient. Hello, Fumi from Kent. Hi, yes, welcome. Hi, Plus Academy from Instagram. So we're going to welcome some people to come live if you want to, you know, ask me questions or if you, you know, this is just your free moment. So please let us feel very free on this live session. So I came on YouTube because YouTube is better than Instagram in terms of sharing. Um, okay, so we, we are discussing the topics you can see. We want to talk about the career opportunities in the UK. So irrespective of whatever, you know, government, um, you know, what, whatever they are saying, the government has said, you know, you can still fit into this category I'm going to be talking about for UK. For Ireland, the government does not have any plan to scrap out the general employment permits. So if you know about Ireland, we have what we call the critical employment list and the general employment permit. So as we speak, those two lists are still standing. Those two lists are still there. So nothing has changed for Ireland. I hear some people saying, oh, Ireland has, uh, has stopped granted, granting uh, visas to people from certain countries. I'm not aware of that. As far as I'm aware, several of our students have gotten jobs in Ireland. Some of them, their visa is still in process. Some of them, their GEP is still in process. So I'm talking about what is still obtainable till date. And if you understand the way immigration policies work, government will not just wake up and say, we are changing the policy today. So they are going to give time. Like for example, the bill that was passed in the House of Commons in the UK a few weeks ago, it was a bill. So it has not yet been passed into law. And they said, if it's going to be passed into law, it's going to start from spring next year which is the 6th of April. I talked about it in my last video that it's on the 6th of April that these changes come to pass. So you still have a window of opportunity. You know, you still have, there are lots of things that you can still do. I'm sure by now a lot of you would have heard that, um, you know, NHS workers are excluded from that law. And, you know, I don't know if I can share screen, if I can show you, you know, how many jobs we have in the NHS and, you know, what other countries are saying. Okay, so let's see who we have here. We still don't have lots of people here. I don't know. Should we go on? Okay, uh, from Potakot, you're welcome. I, Dolapo, good to see you from the UK. Okay, so what should we start with? Should we start with dental nursing in the UK? Uh, guys, let me know. What do you want us to start with? Just put it on the comment section what you want to start with. Uh, let me know what you want us to start discussing. This is just a freestyle discussion. If I need to share screen to show you something, I will share screen. So that's why I want to use YouTube because it's easier for me to, you know, to like lecture, if you get what I mean. Okay, someone said hospitality. I don't know about hospitality. I can't talk about hospitality. I'm talking about my topics are UK dental nursing. Then we'll talk of Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. So I'm not going into hospitality because my knowledge of the hospitality industry is limited. So I can't really talk about that industry. Yes. So Sylvia said we should start with dental nursing. Okay. Ask me your questions about dental nursing and I will answer. So let me start by talking about dental nursing. So dental nursing is an area of nursing. I'm sure you know we have adult nursing. We have dental nursing. We have... um. Uh, child care or pediatric nursing, we have mental health nursing, 
and uh, we have learning disability nursing. So these are the different branches of nursing that are common here in the UK. And most international students will come and study three years for a bachelor's degree nursing in the United Kingdom. I'm sure you know that to study nursing in the UK, in Ireland, in Australia, or in New Zealand is very competitive. So it's very competitive to study nursing in these four countries, even in Canada as well. And it's also quite expensive. So it's not cheap. Okay, it's not cheap to study nursing. So um, nursing will take you anything from three years, or if you already have a diploma in nursing, to get a bachelor in nursing, maybe a one year top up. You know, if you do not have a diploma in nursing, you could do a two years pre master's course in nursing in the UK, it's two years. However, not everybody has the money, the finances, and the time. So I will highly recommend dental nursing as a fast, you know, track to study nursing. So the dental nursing course that we are talking about is, um, it comes with a visa sponsorship, this particular dental nursing package. It comes with visa sponsorship and you will study dental nursing. You will train to become a dental nurse in just what? In just one year. In just one year, you can become a dental nurse. And that includes the time that you will use to do your clinical exam, which we call the OSCEs, um, objective structural exams, clinical exam, your OSCE, your record of uh, experience, because you need to be working in a placement. Uh, someone said, I'm really interested in dental nursing, but you said it's only for your students. No, I said that we will prioritize our students. That's what I said. I said we'll prioritize our students. Doesn't mean it's only for our students. So I would definitely give priority. Uh, for dental, mental health nursing, we don't have any space for mental health nursing. And the dental nursing we are talking about, because it's a work-based training, is a vocational training, so you are working, is actually a skilled visa that you're going to get, and it, it allows you to bring your dependents, okay? So on the dental nursing pathway, you can, you can apply for your dependents. You can come with your dependents as far as is before April. So we don't know what's going to happen after April 2024. And we have to be cautious. You know, I can't tell you that it's going to be. So we have to wait to hear what the government says. But for now, you can come with your dependents on the dental nursing pathway. So dental nursing, you the qualifications you require... You know, if you go to some dental nursing schools, they will tell you you don't require any qualifications. But we know from experience that because the course is one year and you, you definitely need some experience, it's not just something you can jump into without any healthcare background. So our requirement is that you will need to be registered or nearly completed the level three diploma in healthcare. That's number one requirement. You need to be above 18 years of age. You need to be able to commit a minimum of 20 hours a week to work, to work because it's a vocational based course, it's a practice based course. So you must be working. Without that work, you cannot get the dental nursing. So it comes with the work. So the package comes with the work. You will be paid for your, your uh, work experience. You'll be paid the, the fees range anything from 10 pounds and above. You can get 12 pounds, but I can't tell you exactly how much you will get, but you will be paid as part of the dental nursing package. So you will see that um, the benefits of being a dental nurse or studying for the dental nurse, they are a lot, they are huge, because within one year, you will qualify once you pass your objective structural clinical exams, your OSCE, as a dental nurse, you will get your registration number RN and you will be what? You will be accredited by GDC or you'll be licensed by GDC, General Dental Council. And once you are licensed by the General Dental Council, as we speak, dental nursing is part of the shortage occupation list. Like all the other nursing, dental nursing is on the shortage occupation list. The NHS, they are, let me see if I can share screen. The NHS, they are looking for lots of dental nurses, lots of dental nurses, okay? So there are lots of opportunities for dental nursing in the NHS. And if you are like me, I don't like anything that, you know, everybody is rushing to, everybody is doing. Dental nursing is less competitive. It's a lot less competitive than what? 
than um, adult nursing or care. So you don't have lots of people that are dental nurses. You don't have lots of people that are, you know, doing dental nursing. So the opportunity for you to get job, you know, as a dental nurse, either with NHS, I'm just going to share screen with you guys, okay? So please let me know when you can see my screen. I want to share the opportunities with you because it's not just good for me to talk to you. I'll take questions, but let me just share, then I'll come to questions. It's good for you to be able to see things for yourself, okay? That's why I came on on um, on YouTube. So you can I can share screen and you'll see things for yourself and like nobody would bamboozle you. So it would really be you seeing for yourself. So if you can see my screen, please just give me a thumbs up. I'm going to... Um, I can't see you now, so I have to go on um, on YouTube so that I can... I have to go on YouTube on my phone so I can see uh what's happening so give me a thumbs up okay i'm live now see, uh what's happening okay so you can see my screen now just pause it so let me put it on mute okay so this i went on track jobs this is track jobs and i put nothing so i'm just going to scroll back so that you can see how i search for this job so i already have an account with track jobs and i put dental nurse uh, I didn't put any occupation. I didn't put any grade. Dental nurses are usually from grade four and above. So don't put any grade. Just put UK, you know, and uh, nationwide. Then you click on search. So you can see all the jobs that are coming up. Senior dental nurse. This is after you have worked at least two years. You can be earning up to 35K. Uh, qualified dental nurse. So once you qualify, once you finish the one year and you are qualified, you can be earning a salary of 30 to 33K. And this is a bad health NHS qualified dental nurse is band four. Um, so it depends on the area, really. This is Bristol. So you can let, let's check this one in Bristol. Uh, okay. So it's a full time. You can work full time, 37.5 hours, permanent contract. Um, so we can just scroll down to see some of the requirements. You know, so this is once you, you know, you've gotten your national certificate in dental nursing or the level three in dental nursing, which we are doing, which is the package you are coming on, a valid GDC registration. So as I said, at the end of the course, you will get your registration from General Dental Council. And then they need desirable criteria if you know how to do conscious sedation, special care dentistry. So all these are the training that you will get in your placement, okay? So essential criteria, you can read through it, knowledge and experience, you know, so all these are the experience you will get. And, you know, so they, they accept um, they accept visa sponsorship for, uh, for band three and above in the NHS, as I'm sure you would have heard me said before. So if I go back, so you can see that there are lots of roles, lots and lots and lots of roles for dental nurses, registered dental nurse, community dental nurse, band five restorative specialist dental nurse, qualified dental nurse. So it's not like Laura just telling you, you can see for yourself the range, 35 to 42K, dental therapist, you know, so dental therapist is a step higher, you know, if you want to do some specialist course after. So you can see that there is a career progression there's a clear a career pathway here. So you can see that you can even give yourself like a couple of years, you become an urgent care practitioner and you'll be earning 43 to 50,000. So you can see, so you, you see that there is a pathway. And if you want to now specialize, maybe as an orthodontic nurse, then it even becomes better. You can go into your business, you can become a partner in a dental practice. You know, there are lots of things that you can do which is what I tell people, I'm going to stop sharing now and just come and take some questions, which is what I tell people that when you come abroad, you know, we've seen a lot of, you know, stories on the news, on Insta blog, on, you know, Instagram, of people saying that, oh, I, you know, I'm working so hard. I don't know how much I'm earning. It's left to you. You know, it's left to you. So I always advise people that you need to have a clear cut, you know, direction of where you are going to. So right now, if your, your direction is going to be dental nursing, you can almost see the opportunities for career progression. You can become a dental practice manager, you know, and be earning up to 50K. You can aspire to become a dental surgeon. 
So it just keeps going, you know, higher and higher. So you are not stuck to one profession. I know of so many people that have just been stuck, you know, to one particular level since they came to the UK or to Ireland or to whatever country. They did not think of progress. They did not think of what can I do to progress. So it is very easy for you to be in any of these countries if you are watching me from the UK and someone that comes from, you know, from India, from Nigeria, from Pakistan, just starts to fly because that person, you know, came with a qualification. That person came with, you know, a, a, a they came with a plan. They actually came with a purpose. Okay. So don't get, you know, don't get stuck into that mentality that anything, anything counts. No, not just anything counts. You will see that people that are your bosses or people that are, um that are your 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 leaders or your mentors at work what do they have you know what's different you, they, they are not sometimes more intelligent than you they are not sometimes more gifted than you but what is the difference between you from them is the qualifications they have is the experience they have is the trainings that they have gone to so that is why i say you know you need to you need to start to plan your career it's not going to happen by chance your career is not something that just you just arrive at a place. You will just wake up one morning and you become an orthodontic nurse or you wake up one morning and you become a practice manager. No, it's something you need to sit down and work out a career plan, a professional development plan that this is where I want to see my career get to by the grace of God in the next three years, in the next five years. And these are the steps that I'm going to take to achieve it. So that's why we are talking about it. So I'm going to take some questions on UK dental nursing. If you have any questions for me, please drop the questions. If you want to come live, you know, you can come live. And after UK dental nursing, we will now move to Ireland, from Ireland to Australia, from Australia to New Zealand. So I have plenty of time tonight. So we are going to take it one step at a time, okay? So let me scroll and just take some questions. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll um i will start from okay dollar for me said i'm interested no okay i've answered for question so for me it's not only for our students although that the the places are limited you know because we have just a few places for the first cohort so we are currently sieving through all the uh the requests that we received and we'll see if we have any extra place for anyone but i said i will prioritize grammatorial students so uh, Pius is asking, please, I'd like to know what is the cost fee after registration? Okay, Pius, we'll come to New Zealand and Australia. We'll come to that question after dental, after Ireland. What and what do you need to enroll for dental nursing? So the last as I said, you need to, um, if you are our student, we need to see that you are, you are above 50% or on a case-by-case -case basis, we can have that discussion with you. If you are a student, we can have a discussion with you. But the minimum requirement is registration on the level three diploma. You need to be above 18 years of age. You need to have a credit in math and English. And you need to show a true commitment. I don't want a situation where somebody comes on this pathway or this package and is struggling, does not come to classes, does not come to lectures. That's why I said I want grammatorial student because we have seen some students, they will just register on this course and you won't see them for the next three months. They don't communicate on the group. They don't come to classes. They just think that, oh, because I've registered, then that automatically qualifies me to be a student. Those kind of students, we are not going to take them. So we want students that have, that have a track record, a, a track record in doing their work. We want people that are serious, serious-minded people. That's why we decide to close it. We don't open it to everybody because we don't want to deal with the general public. So that's the requirement. So, okay, um, uh, Taiwo is asking, as a dental surgery technician, yes, as a dental surgery technician, you overqualify. As a dentist, as a dental nursing uh, surgery technician in another country, you qualify. I think Taiwo, I don't know, is it you that sent your CV? Yes, if you've already sent your CV, a member of our team, admission team will contact you. So you are qualified. Um, I just finished my MVQ3 from City and Guide, but my certificate will be arriving in January. Can I still register? Yes. So Dolapo, you can register, but I don't know if the space, if the, we still have space. Uh, is Mr. Pascal here? If Mr. Pascal is on this live, 
he can tell us if he's still accepting people. But from what I know, I know that the spaces as at yesterday, I think the spaces are really limited. So you need you want to put in your application immediately and pay your deposit. We are not reserving slot because a lot of people have said I'm interested, reserve, reserve for me. Is first come, first serve. Is those that have registered and have met the commitment, those that have committed that have a slot. So if you have registered and you have not committed, you have not gotten a slot. I'm sure you understand what I mean by committed. So you need to commit to have a slot. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, yeah, you could see my screen. Yes, you can see there are a lot of opportunity. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris says she's happy following grammatorial. And uh, we are also happy, you know, uh, we are also really happy to have you. Okay, so the dental nursing training for grammatorial students that are on level three program, uh, because prices change, you know, I want to mention it in a live broadcast so that somebody will not come and say, um, oh, but you said it's X, Y, Z, thousand pounds, you know, so it's in thousands of pounds and it comes as a package. So Godwin, I know that you have been communicating with us on IG, so just drop us a message and we'll let you know what the package is entails but it's a full package when i say full is a full package so the package contains everything all that it does not contain it doesn't contain your air tickets and your accommodation so there is no air ticket there is no accommodation but it's a full package if you want accommodation when you get here they can put the person in staff accommodation but it will be a room it will be one room in a shared accommodation at an additional cost. So if you want accommodation, you can discuss. If you already have accommodation somewhere, you can be, but you must be around London. That's where the jobs, the practi practical jobs are. It's around London or one hour around the M25. If you are familiar with London, you will know the M25. So you can be in Kent. You can be in uh, Essex, you can be in Dagenham, you can be in, even in Hertfordshire or in Slough, but anywhere like around London where you can easily commute because we cannot guarantee you a placement if you are outside of these areas that I've mentioned. So if you are in Manchester, you can stay in Manchester or in Liverpool, but it will not be your duty to look for a placement yourself. So we can give you a letter and you will use that letter to go and look for a placement for your dental practice. We cannot guarantee that you get that placement if you are outside of these areas that we specified. So I hope I've answered your question. So Dolapo, it is face to face for dental nursing. So you will be in London. You'll be taking the training in our center in London. It's a face to face training, either in acting or in Oxbridge. You do the face-to-face -face training, and that is once in a week or every other week. But your practicals is 20, minimum of 20 hours. Some can be up to 40 hours a week. It all depends on the practice, the dental practice where you'll be posted to. If they want you, some I see, they say they want a full-time staff, which is 37.5 hours. But some will say 20 hours is what they can offer. But it is a minimum the requirement is a minimum of 20 hours every single week. So uh, those that are not our students that want to join, what about someone who is on another visa in the UK? Yes, you can join irrespective of your visa. As long as you have a valid visa to be in the UK. So that is why we said that the package that we are doing comes with a work you know, permit. As long as you have a valid visa in the UK, either you are a dependent or you are a student that can work 20 hours, then you can join the course if you are in the UK. So you can join or you want to switch. You want to switch to join this one and you are already in the UK. You can also join. Okay, so uh, Doris said, can a student who is in grammatorial training for level three also take Yes, so Doris, that is why I said is on a case by case basis that we are going to look at it. We are going to look at your track record. You know, have you been attending classes? Have you been submitting your assignment? Because nothing is not a joke. So even though I say it's one year fast track, I know that there will be times where 
you'll be crying. Oh, this course is so difficult. They didn't tell me. You know that I keep it real. I do not try to, you know, sugarcoat things for people. The course is hard. So let me just warn you in advance. So if you think that you want to just use this course as an end to a means, this is the wrong course for you. This course is for people that truly want a career in nursing. It's for people that are truly, you know, they are truly ambitious. It's not just for people that, if you know you are someone that cannot burn the midnight candle, you don't know how to read, you don't know how to study, you don't know how to wake up and move yourself, then this course is not for you. Just think of something else. Dental nursing is a course for people that are serious about taking the next step. So um, the course is one year. You will get one year, two years on the permits. So you have an, an extra one year to switch to look for a job if it's NHS Scotland or NHS England or a dental practice that you want to switch to. So you will have that two years permit. Yes, the placement is during the study. So as you are doing the dental nursing, Esther, the work placement is a part of the course. Without the work placement, you cannot be registered by GDC. You can't even do your OSCEs. Your OSCE is your objective structural clinical exam. You can't do your OSCE if you didn't have a work placement. So you need a work placement to do the course. Okay. So um, does anybody want to come live? If you want to come live, you just need to let me know and I will invite you. So if you want to come live, I will invite you, but you can switch. You can switch. Yes, I've said you can switch. So if you're already in the UK, yes, you can switch visa. Depending on which visa you are, if you are a student, you must finish your student. You must finish your student visa. So let's go to uh, let's go to Ireland. Let's talk about Ireland. Let's talk about Ireland. So any questions for Ireland? Oh, good. Daily inspiration. Say you have been in my inbox, guys. Let me just say something at this junction. I do not mean to ignore anybody. Okay, the, 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 the messages we have in our inbox, sometimes messages are just hiding in every corner. So it's not as if I'm ignoring you, but it's just that as messages keep coming, it keeps pushing other messages down. So sometimes within a space of an hour, I can have more than 50 messages or 60 messages. So if you sent me a message at 11 and I happen to check my phone at one or two, your message will be at the bottom before I will, I will read the messages at the top. In fact, it will take me more than one or two hours. So please, if you have been trying to reach me, email or message, and I've not replied, it's not that I'm ignoring you. The fastest way you can reach me is either you go through my manager, you go through the manager, or you go through Mr. Pascal. You can reach me easily that way. Or you can book a one-to-one -one with me. You know, you just go on my bio on Instagram and you can book a one-to-one -one session with me. It will just give me an instant alert that I have received it. So that's the fastest way. And in a live session like this, you know, I'm here direct face-to-face. -face. Look at all your questions now. I'm answering it. So this is the best means. I can share screen. I can show you things. So this live session, I will try to be doing it more frequently so that you can ask me questions as you want. Now, let's talk about Ireland. If you are done with School Dollar Core, you can switch. So send us a message and we will see how we can get you on board. So now let's talk about Ireland, okay? So Ireland is a very nice country. Ireland is a lot smaller than the UK. That's why you are not hearing a lot of news. You are not seeing people putting ring light, talking about Ireland. It's UK, 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 UK. We have been hearing a lot of stories about. Now Canada is coming, but we don't really hear about uh, Ireland. Why? Because Ireland is very small. In land mass, Ireland is small. In population, Ireland is small. The UK is 12 times larger than the Republic of Ireland in terms of population. So you can imagine that there are more people in the UK, more opportunities in comparison, you know, in the UK than Ireland. So 
relatively, relatively, it looks like it is more. But however, in Ireland, it is less competitive. It's less competitive. So I can, I can, for example, there is a particular company where a lot of, you know, students and prospects have sent me message that they have gotten job in Ireland. So when people say that they are not getting job in Ireland, I laugh because, you know, I receive a lot of messages every single day. And if not for privacy and confidentiality, I will share these messages. Somebody came to my DM and say, oh, you don't have any testimony. I said, look at you. If you think I don't have any testimony, that is your own. I'm not going to convince you. For privacy and confidentiality, I cannot come and start. Not everybody wants to come out and start sharing their stories. It's not everybody that wants to come live. It's not everybody that wants the whole world to know they just got a job. It's not everybody that wants the whole world to know that they are relocating to Ireland or they are relocating to the UK. It's not everybody. But the few people that say, okay, yes, share my story or I want to come live with me, then fine. We have several grammatorial students that have gotten job when they get to the UK. Oh, I'm so busy. I have a shift. I have a shift. I have a shift. They, they can't come live. And I will not hold it against them. Is their personal decision, and I respect it. But I can tell you categorically that people are still getting jobs in Ireland. There are companies that are recruiting in Ireland. If you are applying for Ireland, don't stop. Do not stop. Ireland is still recruiting. Ireland has not closed the door to care workers. As we speak, the care workers for Ireland are still live. The government of Ireland, the immigration minister, released January 1,000 slots you know, she released for home care workers. And in May, she increased those slots because they said they still needed. So home care workers, residential care workers are still qualified for the general employment permits in the Republic of Ireland. Now, let's talk about Ireland. What are the requirements? So I'm just going to share screen with you again. I'm going to share screen with you for Ireland. Um... Okay, so let me know when you can see my screen. I'm just pulling up the healthcare assistant checklist. Uh, when you can see my screen, please just give me a thumbs up. Then we'll talk about one major recruiter. Uh, so for those people that said, oh, I'm a nurse, this and that, uh, I've been trying to apply and they are not recruiting nurses. I'm going to show you a major recruiter that has been recruiting nurses. But the reason why I don't like to bring all these things public, you know, just share them public, is that people do abuse these things. And before you know what is happening, they get irritated and they could close that door. So that's why I am very careful, you know, when we talk about these things in a public uh, forum. I don't like to drop names in a public forum. So I'm sharing screen right now. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Just give me a thumbs up. Or just tell me, you know, that you can see that screen. Okay, so I'll just share it, this first one, then I'll go to the next one. So it says work visas for 1,000 more. This is the Irish Times. So, so this is the Irish Times. It's the national newspaper. Okay, so you can see that it's the national newspaper. Can you see that it's the national newspaper? The national newspaper, so that's the Irish time. Please, can you like, can you like this? Only five people like, and I can see that more than 43 people are watching and only five people have liked this. So please, for me to continue, I want to see at least 40 people like it, except you don't like what I'm doing, then I can, you know, go and do other things. So please make sure you like. I want to see the likes go up and just share, share it to the groups. Share it to your groups, to the groups that you are on. You know, share it on all our, our, our grammatorial groups so that all the students will, you know, will see and they will not uh, think that we have uh, done this session without informing them. Even though I know it was quite short notice, but we will try to give more notice next time and we'll try to be more regular. Okay, so let's see more people uh like so i'm just going to wait for us to to like please like 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 let's talk let's talk now so we want to really inspire each other we want to inspire ourselves share it on your groups please 
Okay, so we want to inspire each other and we want to make sure that 2024 will be our year and we want to take action. Now, the Irish Times says that work visas for more than 1,000 home care workers confirmed to tackle recruitment crisis in the sector. Now, visa for non-EU nationals. You know, people come in on Instagram or TikTok to say, oh, stop telling people lies, stop doing this. But now you can see it for yourself. This is the Irish Times. So this is national newspaper. Visas for non-EU. They said non-EU. Okay, to, to be addressed to boost staff deficits, you know, with boost of pay and conditions. So this is the Minister of State for Mental Health and Older People. You know, she released that last year, the government allocated 660 million for home care packages in the budget, but the workers are not there. Guys, it's not me that is saying this. It's this lady that is saying it. So if you are in the Republic of Ireland and you are not happy about this, then go and speak to the Minister of State. Don't speak to me. Go and speak to her. So now let's go into the gist of the day. This, this document I'm sharing, please let me know if you can see the next documents. Uh, I've gone to another document, but okay, I think I need to stop share and share again. Okay, so everybody has seen that. Please let me know your thoughts. If you go online and you see people saying, oh, uh, please, uh, Ireland, they are not recruiting, they have stopped recruiting, blah, blah, blah. You can see that that is not true. They're just trying to discourage you. But our work is to encourage you and to make sure that you get it. Now I'm sharing another screen. So if you can see the new screen I'm sharing, give me a thumbs up. I'm still looking at my likes. So if you've not hit that like button, what are you waiting for? Please hit the like button and share. So I'm sharing a new screen. And this document is a checklist that was produced by the Department of Enterprise, Trade, and Employment. It's called the DET. So this department, they are the ones that issue work permits. Whether you are in IT or you are in hospitality, or you are in any sector. So I'm going to show you how to check your sector because they have the ineligible occupation list. They have the critical occupation list. So we are going to check those lists to see which sector because I'm aware that not everybody here is in healthcare, even though I am focusing on healthcare. But I said on Instagram that I will also touch on people that are not in healthcare. So let's just go on. So healthcare assistant general employment permit checklist. So now this checklist has been produced by the employment permits division in the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Employment to assist with applications for general employment permit with a focus on healthcare assistant role. So to make an application, you will make the application through the DET, but before you can make an application, let us read this guide. Now, there is a criteria in that GEPE. The GEPE assumes all occupations to be eligible. So every occupation is assumed eligible unless otherwise specified under the list of ineligible occupations. So if you want to check, I'm going to open this in another tab. If you want to check if you are eligible, go and check that list of ineligible occupations. If your occupation is not there, it means you are eligible for under the general employment permit for the Republic of Ireland. So that is the, you know, that is the litmus test. That is how you can check if your, if your what, if your occupation is eligible, you know, in Ireland to get a work permit. So now general employment permits may be obtained. And you see that this general employment permit is for people that are outside of the EU. You know, it's for people that are outside of the EU. So if you're outside of EU, if you're in any country, the good thing about Ireland is that there is no red list. There is no blue list. There is no green list. There is no such list. So irrespective of what country you are currently in, you qualify. Okay, you qualify. And there is no age limit. So that is the beauty about Ireland. There is no country restriction. There is no age restriction. Now, let us look at the minimum requirements. 
So you need to have an annual salary. So whatever job you are applying for must pay you at least 27,000 euros. And this is based on the fact that you are working 39 hours a week. They must pay you 27,000 euros. So if you are going to be working 40 hours a week, the job must have a minimum salary of 27,684 euros. Okay, so that is the salary requirement. Now, it is important also to note that another requirement for this visa to be renewed is you must have a relevant QQI level 5 qualification within two years. So because it is a requirement for visa within two years, most employers know that this qualification takes time to obtain. So they want to, they want to be assured that either you have the qualification or you have the experience, or you are already working towards the qualification. So that is where, you know, those that are already on the level three diploma, you don't need to have finished before you start applying. You don't need, the students that have gotten these jobs, they have not yet graduated. They just, you know, get, they are just ap ap applying for certificates now. So you don't need to have the certificate before you can, you know, apply. As long as you can show a proof to the employers that you are already registered on a course that is equivalent to the QQI level five, or you're already working towards this qualification, or you already have a nursing degree, then they will accept you, okay? So when applying for general employment permits, a labor market need test is required. So that is on the employer side. They need to carry out this test. If you are a grammatorial student or if you have passed through our career with, I spend time explaining how that test is carried out, which website you can go to find the jobs where that test is being carried out and which websites they advertise these jobs, all the healthcare jobs. I've also shared that with our, you know, career week student. So the employers will need to provide all this information. The employee will need to provide this information, your ID information, your passport number, says your passport must be valid for at least six months. So the passport must have a validity of six months. You know, if you're already in the States, you must have your uh, GNIB and you must have qualification. You see qualification is coming here again. Confirm details of qualification relevant to the role. So those of our students that have gotten the job, their company needs to write to us and we need to confirm the unit. We need to confirm the modules, the qualification time, the GLH, guided learning hours, TQT, total qualification time. All those are the, you know, what we needed to confirm to the company before they gave them the role. So you also need details of previous visas. If you have ever applied for island visas, you need to give them details, details of the employment, details of your pay, you know, uh, then you need to pay for your permit is 1,000 euros for the permit if you are using an agent. So let me say it at this junction that Ireland allows the use of agents. So you can use an agent, you can use a third party. So if you are using a third party, that will be the agent details. Then the advertisement, as I talked about earlier, and it takes about, you know, eight weeks for them to process the permits for you. I'm going to stop sharing. Once the permit has been processed, the next step is that you are qualified to now apply for your entry visa, which is only a hundred euros. Okay, so you can all see it. So does anybody have any question to ask about Ireland? Is anybody interested in Ireland? I can't see lots of questions for Ireland. Is anybody interested in Ireland? So let's take questions on Ireland before we go to Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand, they are very new. So let's see any interest in Ireland. Nobody is talking about Ireland here. Okay, so if um, we don't have any interest in Ireland, I'm just going to say that one thing about the Republic of Ireland is that it can allow you to bring your dependents after 12 months. Excuse me. So if you are considering Ireland, know that for the first 12 months, you can't travel with your children, you can't travel with your husband, you can't travel with your wife, you can't travel with your dependents. But after the first 12 months, then you can travel. You cannot file for them to come and join you. So I think that is fair enough. So these are some other options you can consider. You know, all hope is not lost with the news that the United Kingdom has given. 
but you can want to consider these other pathways. So island is, is what I have seen that works. So I will only come and tell you what I know works. So the Republic of Ireland is one of them. So now, um, Olainka is asking, after getting job, I'm just going to show your question. After getting job in Ireland, what are the other things to do? And if I got the job, will they sponsor my visa and flight ticket? So, okay, this is a very good question. Let's deal with it. Now, it depends on the company, okay? Some companies will say, yes, we will sponsor your flight ticket, we will sponsor your visa. Like this person I talked about now, one of our students, the company is sponsoring his visa and his employment permit. They are taking care of everything, but they are not sponsoring his flight. So he's going to pay his flight ticket himself. But I know of someone else that the company sponsored everything, including accommodation. So it varies from company to company. It varies between companies. Normally, the very big companies, companies that are like big groups, financially buoyant companies, they will sponsor everything. But companies that are like small companies, you know, 50 and less companies, there are companies that have between maybe 10 to 50 staff, they may not have the financial capacity because it, it is expensive to recruit a foreign staff is very expensive will cost an employer at least nothing less than 10,000 grand. You know, uh, a certain um, group did a study of how much it costs an employer to employ, to recruit a foreign staff, and it costs a lot of money. You know, it does cost money, all the administrative, the overhead, you know, everything could be quite expensive. The cost could rack up. So it depends on the company. Okay, so... Uh, Let's take another question. Uh, Godwin said, is QQI level five diploma equivalent to level three? Yes. So the level five in the Republic of Ireland is equivalent to a level three ROQF. Please, by now, if you have been following us, you will know that we always say ROQF. What does ROQF stand for? Someone should tell me in the description box. Someone should tell me in the chat box, in the comments, what does RQF stand for? So who knows what RQF stands for? RQF stands for Regulated Qualification Framework, okay? So Regulated Qualification Framework. Now, I have a lot of people that tell me, oh, I am... Um, I have a diploma, this, this, this. Let me just show you the way you can check if your diploma is, you know, regulated. If you just check your awarding body. So I keep it real here and I love to be transparent. You understand? Not everybody will be happy about this, but let me tell you how to check regulated qualification framework. Thank you, Kenny. So if you are doing a course, this is how to check. I'm going to share screen with you. Let me know when you can see my screen. So just go on Google and you type off call, check an awarding body. So you click on it. You can see the website is, okay, I'm sharing now. Maybe it's not yet. It hasn't come through. If you can see, it, give me a thumbs up. Let me just know that you can see before I will continue talking. Okay. So this is check if an awarding body is recognized in the UK. So if you want to check if this awarding body, like for grammatorial now, we use TQUK and NCC. So those are the two awarding bodies that are, uh, you know, accrediting our courses, the courses we deliver. So you want to check, instead of just sending us your results, say, check my result for me. We don't verify results here. So you just come to, um, you know, check. So how to use the register, search the register, then you now type uh, TQUK, let's say level three diploma is what we are offering, you know, level three diploma in healthcare. You know, you can also verify your certificates, you know, in healthcare support. This is TQ, uh, so this is the diploma that we are doing. So you can search it. Is this in the, you know, is this, you know, look at it. So it's here. That's the, the, the course. That is the number. That is everything. So you can see that this is an accredited qualification. Now, if you want to, this is healthcare support services, you know. So let's say healthcare support work. So this is an accredited. This is level three. 
it is accredited. Okay, so you can see this is an accredited course. You can see subject area health and social care. It is on the off core register. Now let us check NCC. So NCC is the, the second awarding body that we are using. Okay, NCC. So you see that this NCC is also accredited. So NCC education is an off call awarding body. So before you say you are just getting a diploma, you want to check, is it RQF? If it's RQF, then that means that it falls within the framework and it's equivalent, okay? So it's equivalent to the QQI level five. Now, Jessica is asking, I have a BA degree and my experience, uh, let's put Jessica, is based on healthcare two years in childcare and four years in the dialysis sector. How can you be of help to me? So, um, Jessica, it depends on where you are and where you want to get to. So, it depends on where you are, it depends on which country you are and which country you want to get to. So, it's easier if you are, I will just be honest with you, there are sometimes it may be necessary for you to move. I remember there was a lady, a nurse I saw in Rwanda, in Kigali, you know, where uh, recruiting for one particular NHS trust, and this lady applied, you know, so I saw the name, this is a Nigerian name, this is a Yoruba name, and the person was in Kigali, so immediately I, um, we tried to get her on WhatsApp, and we now ask her, okay, why are you in Kigali? I know anybody can move anywhere, but she said she used that, this public forum, okay, so she, how do I say this now? She used that as a means. I think you understand. So because of, you know, she used it as a step. Let me use that word. She used as a stepping stone to get to her destination. So she used it as a stepping stone. So there are times when you may need to take a desperate action. So like, you know, you may need to move a step ahead. As long as you know what you are doing, you can't be stopped. In my mind, I was like, Rwanda of all places. Then I started researching Rwanda. I said, oh, more, this country is not bad, though, the way we knew it in the 90s. This country has changed. And she used that as a step, you know. So it's easier to get to Rwanda. It's easier to get to Kigali than it may be to get somewhere else. So if you are in a country where competition is high, I'm not going to mention any country's name, but you know some countries where competition is very, very high. Like take, for example, I know that uh, Finland, Silk Road, has stopped accepting applicants from Nigeria. Silk, Silk Road is not accepting applicants from Nigeria, for example. But Silk Road is bringing more than 100 care workers to Finland every month. The same thing with the NHS. There are companies that are bringing in more than 100 nurses, care workers every month. So the UK, it all depends on location, okay? So there are some location where it is harder. There is no gain say. There are some locations that due to the competition, it is harder to move from those locations. So where you want to get to, it's not impossible, but it is, it is a bit more difficult because of the competition that is coming from those locations. There are even some people that they will put their filters in their emails there are some HRO emails that they can put their filters and say, don't, don't automatically reject emails from this location. If they are being bombarded, like in a day you are receiving 100 emails, 200 emails from a certain geographical location, you can filter it off. So that is why, you know, coming to post a company online or coming to post this link or post that link, you know what YouTubers are doing. It's not doing any good for many of you. It's not doing any good because it will just make that company to just make those companies to just filter off your location. So as you are applying, you are getting an automatic rejection. They don't even get to see your application. They just get automatic rejection because you are becoming a pest and a menace to them. So let's do things with wisdom, okay? So let's use wisdom to do things. So you can apply, Jessica, depending on where you are. You know, it depends on where you are. If you're in the Middle East, fine. If you are in, you know, some other countries, then you need to do some more work. Okay, so um, it's level three, a must for dental nursing. 
again, like I said, for us, for our center, yes, we need level three so that we can, we can know that you can complete it in one year. Or we need someone that has a track record. If you have done a level three or you have an OND or a degree in a healthcare related uh, subject, then we can consider you. Uh, someone said, can ban three jo get job easily in Ireland? Easily is relative. So like I said, Olainka, depending on where you are, depending on where you are. Okay, Fumilayo asked a very interesting question. Can you register for NVQ3 and still register for dental nursing? This is a very interesting question. I would have liked our head of admissions to answer this question if he was here. Is Mr. Pascal here to answer this question? Because everybody has their department, okay? So in gram I don't get involved in things like, you know, admission decisions. I don't get involved in certain things, you know? So we look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. If we see that you are serious and we feel you can merge both together, then we see your commitment, we can consider you. But that is the decision of our admissions, uh, you know, coordinator to decide if you meet the requirements. You will submit a statement of purpose, you will submit all your documents, and they will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis and decide if you, if you qualify to, to join. So we have about 50 people watching now, 40, 46, and still 29 likes. So guys, hit the like button. Before we go into New Zealand, Australia, before we go into Australia, please, please hit the like button. Let's get 40 likes and then I'll start talking about Australia. Let's get 40 likes. Australia is very interesting. And the reason why I like Australia because it is fresh, it is new, it is new in the market. Australia is very, very new. So Australia is not yet flooded in terms of the some of the new visa pathways that they have opened. You know, some countries, especially in Europe, are closing their doors. But Australia, they are opening their doors. And Australia have said in November that they need skilled migrants. They need trained migrants. They don't want their country to be a dumping ground for people. They want skilled people. They want people that can contribute to their economy. People that can come and grow their economy, people that can add value, that's what they are looking for. So if you look at most of their temporary skilled workers visa class, they are asking for people that have vocational qualifications. So if Australia is your goal, you want to look at which vocation can you choose. So before I will go to Australia, I want to see 40 likes and then I'm going to pull up Australia. Okay, so I'll pull up Australia, then we will look at, um, I will, I I'll go back to Ireland and I'll just show you one recruiter that is, um, is, is accepting people for Ireland. But the thing now is that when you show some of these recruiters, let us use wisdom. Don't just bombard them, okay? Don't just bombard them. Uh, before I go to Australia, I'm still waiting for the likes to go up. I'm waiting for the likes. So let me just show you what something I was saying, the ineligible occupation list. Um, I'll show you the ineligible occupation list for Ireland and then one of the third party recruiters that you can use for Ireland. Okay, so we are on 35 likes now, 49 people watching. Please hit the like button. Let's go up to 40 before we start Australia. Okay. So this is the ineligible occupation list for employment permits. Um, I will try and save all these things, you know, after this live. I'll try and, I will try and add them to the description if it's possible, or I'll add them to the comment section. So you want to check your occupation, okay? So you want to scroll. If you see your occupation in this list, it means that it does not qualify for general employment permits. If your occupation is on this list, what that means is that you do not qualify. So scroll through this list. You can see that there are a lot of administrative roles don't qualify, you know, for Ireland. A lot of administrative roles, a lot of mostly administrative, even construction, you know, they are not on the general employment list. So childminders, teaching assistants, support assistants. They are not on that list, okay? So 
you want to check this list, but I can tell you that care has been removed from this list. So care now qualifies for the general employment permit. So that's what you need to know. So for the critical, I'm not going to share the critical employment permit because the critical employment permit is, you can just go and search that one up. We are on 36 likes now. I said we need to get to 40. So now let me share with you this recruiter. I reached out to them and they are recruiting from uh, outside of the EU. They are recruiting non-EU uh, workers. So these are the, the people, CPL. But you must make sure that your application is attractive to them. And like I said earlier, if they are inundated by a certain, um, a certain group of you know, people, they may switch off. So you need to be a bit strategic with your application. So let's look at, they have different kinds of careers, allied healthcare jobs. So that is for people like physiotherapists, you know, occupational therapists, psychologists, biochemists, so all the allied healthcare, counselor, healthcare, medical scientists, nursing, occupational therapists, pharmacy and uh, physiotherapists, radiography, social care, speech and language jobs. So you can see all the jobs that they have here. So if we go on healthcare, we can look at everything because of the paucity of time. So let's look at healthcare assistants. So you see that uh, they are looking for HCAs. They will say all levels, but I would highly recommend that if you are applying from outside of the EU, you want to be at a higher level. I described the pyramid structure, you know, in one of my live videos, that the higher you go, the less competitive it is. A pyramid, if you look at a pyramid, the base is very wide and, you know, the top, the the peak is very small. So the higher you go, the less competitive it is. So you want to, you know, position yourself above that competition. So even as a HCA, you want to position yourself above the competition. So you can, they have um, in Ireland, they have H HSE facilities. HSE is like the NHS in Ireland, um, the health service executive acute hospitals, residential care. So all these are the different settings that they have and they can act as a recruitment partner. So you can have a legit recruitment agency go through them to get jobs. So you can see all the jobs that they have. Can you see all the jobs that they have? But how to get these people now to view, see social care, healthcare assistant, 36,000 to 42,000 euros. It's how you can highlight yourself to these people is the thing. Because you are not the only one applying. They have lots and lots of people applying. And their jobs are good. Sometimes if you get job through agencies, the jobs are really good. So you see, they've partnered with St. John of God's Dublin Southeast Services. You know, so they have residential programs. You can see very good paying jobs these guys have. So I'm going to tell you, you need to be, there's a strategy to get their attention, which I'm not going to mention on this live video, because if I mention it on this live video, it will no longer be a strategy anymore. But I just wanted to show you that there are still jobs and that Ireland is still recruiting outside of the EU. So if Ireland is your destination, you know, don't be discouraged. All those people that are saying, oh, don't come to Ireland. There's no accommodation in Ireland you know, Ireland is no longer recruiting. They just want to discourage you. Forge ahead. As you go into 2024, forge ahead. When people are eating and drinking for Christmas, throw in your application. I don't want to measure my strategies. Let me not give it out. Okay, let me keep it. Do we have 40? Yes, we have 40. So I can, I can move on. I can move on. So let's move on to Australia. Now, Australia is uh is one place that many people are not talking about again that is why it will be good but another difficulty about australia is that it is not known as much there's no much information about australia you don't have lots of bloggers you don't have lots of youtubers that are talking about australia so the information is not there again that is why it is an advantage so anywhere the competition is low is an advantage for you, is a strategy. 
So when the competition is high, there may be opportunities, but if you compare, if you look at it relative to the competition, it now makes the opportunities less. So a lot of people have been asking me, do you have any success stories in Australia? Da, 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 da. And my answer remains, okay, still keep sitting on the fence until success stories start coming out and then you'll be rushing. By the time you are rushing, it's too late and they close the door. May that not be your portion. So you want to you want to come in early. Now, when did Australia announce her this uh, open door? When did Australia open her doors to this particular visa route? And I don't know if I've I've talked about it, but the Australia I'm just pulling it up. The Australia route started in May. They announced it in May. Okay, so Australia aged care. I like to speak with with pros. So I'm going to share screen with you again. And that's why I asked that we come on YouTube so that I can share screen. I wanted to do on uh, Zoom, but Zoom has its own issues. It can't take more than a certain number of people. So let's look at Australia. And as well, there was also, you know, they also announced, you know, in Australia, um, they, there were changes that were made to their visa. Okay, so they made some changes to the Australia visa uh, system in November, so just last month. And this change is, uh, let me just put it, this change is actually a good news. So it's not, um, it's not a bad news. It's not a bad news. They've extended, they've extended the pathway. So let me open it and share with you. So I like to keep this real. And I always want to make sure that, you know, because grammatorial is all about consultancy. It's about giving you the right information, giving you all this information for free. And if you want to run with it, then please, by all means, take action. Because at the end of the day, this information will be of no good and no use to you if you do not, you know, run with it, if you don't do something about it. Okay, so let me see. Hope I have the right page. I'm just looking to make sure I have the right page for you. Okay, I think it should be this one. Okay, so please, if you can see my screen, give me a thumbs up. Just let me know. Just, you know, post something. I'm looking down at my phone, looking at the chat. So let me see if you can see my screen. Yes, just tell me you can see it. Just tell me you are benefiting just say something to me. Let me know that you are still here. You are still here with me. Okay, so the changes to the... Am I sharing the right page? Uh, okay, can you see this? I've scrolled down all the way to the bottom. Uh, so I'm scrolling all the way to the bottom. If you can see it, let me know. I've scrolled all the way. So it says last updated on the 22nd of November, 2023. Can you see when it was updated there where my cursor is? So it was last updated on the 22nd of November, 2023. So you can see that this is a recent update. This update is fresh. It's just less than a month. So please, guys, you want to take advantage. You want to take advantage of this particular pathway because it's very new. So this pathway we are going to be looking at is a skilled migration program, and it has just been updated. They've ex actually extended it, okay? So the Australian aged care providers can assess the new aged care. You see, it's new. It's a new program. The new aged care industry labor agreements. The aged care industry labor agreement streamlines the recruitment of qualified. Please mark that word qualified qualified direct care workers from overseas. Did it say from Australia? It said from overseas. So this applies to you if you are in any country outside Australia, okay? So it applies to you if you are from overseas to work in the aged care sector. Employers can use this where appropriate, appropriately qualified Australians are not available. Okay, so now the purpose of this aged care industry labor agreement, which we call Aquila for short, is to what? sponsor overseas workers in the following key direct care occupations. So for nursing support workers, for personal care assistants, 
for aged or disabled carers. So these are the three categories. These are the three categories. And it explains them in more details. Okay? So this visa now is valid for two years. And after two years, your employer can nominate you for PRO, which is permanent residency, under the visa subclass 186. Okay, so to apply for the aged care labor agreement, employers have to go through some steps. And mind you, this was just introduced in May. So most employers are currently in the process, those that have contacted are in the process of getting their what, their MOU. They must enter into a memorandum of understanding with any of these three industries. So either they enter an MOU with with Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation or with Health Services Union or with United Workers Union. So it's still very new and most employers are currently going through, through this means. It's a two-step process. So after they sign the MOU, before they can now do what, apply for, you know, the visa under the HK Labor Industry Agreement. So that is the process. So the employers are getting ready and employees are also getting ready. So now let's look at the, the um, you know, let's look at the key visa requirements. So the key visa requirements for this pathway is that you must hold a relevant AQF. AQF stands for Australian Qualification Framework Certificate 3 or equivalent. So mark that word equivalent. I'll come back to it shortly or a higher qualification. You can also have 12 months of relevant work experience or part-time equivalence. So if you have like two or three years of part-time equivalent to 12 months of relevant work experience, it will be accepted in lieu of the qualification. So I'll explain that. You must obtain a... So once you've gotten your AQF level three or a higher qualification, so like those of you that are nurses or medical doctors or, you know, that have reached out to me, as long as you have a qualification that has um, clinical skills, bedside skills, caring skills, then you don't need to do the level three diploma if your qualification is higher. And if you have more than 12 months of relevant experience, you qualify. Then the next step is you need to obtain a positive skills assessment from the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Accredita Accreditation Council, or so there are two, two organizations where you can get your positive skills assessment from, either from the ANMAC, which is the Nursing and Midwifery Council, or from the AQUA. So the AQUA is the Australian Community Workers Association. This is if you obtain your qualifications overseas. And if you are also claiming work experience in lieu of formal qualifications, so you will go through either of these two uh, bodies or organizations to get a positive skills assessment. Once you've gotten your positive skills assessment, you also need to have your IELTS 5.0 or equivalent. Okay, you need to have IELTS 5.0 or equivalent. And um, once you've gotten that, you now need to... These are the main requirements anyway. You need to also have a job. Then you will start applying for a job. The good thing about Australia is that you can also apply through agents. So there are legit recruitment agents that their job is to specifically recruit foreign workers. So you can also go through those agencies for Australia and for New Zealand. The good thing about Australia is that you can go with your family and you'll be paid, I think the pay is, is stated here, the pay is quite good, 51222 Australian dollars. Okay, so the pay is good. So that's a basic summary of Australia, the visa subclass. Um, so I'm going to share this tab. I'm sharing a new tab. Uh, if you can see it, please just let me know. The new tab I'm sharing, tell me you can see it, is the visa subclass 482. So... I've mentioned this on other lives, but just to tell you about it again, 482 visa costs about 1,455 Australian dollars. And the processing time for the care 482 is quite fast. Okay. 
So you can work in Australia for up to two years and then switch to permanent residence or up to four years if an international trade obligation applies. So you will be eligible for permanent residence at the end of the two years. Okay, so that's about it. And then, then if I go to maybe Indeed, you can see all the jobs that are there for this particular aged care visa. For those people that are saying, oh, are they jobs? The most important thing is to get a job. Yes, we know that the most important thing is to get a job. I've started sharing the, the jobs now. Please, I'm looking at my screen. Let me know if you can see the jobs. So how many jobs can you see? 482 visa sponsorship jobs. So this is in Australia, okay? So that is au.indeed.com. So the Indeed for UK is different from Indeed for Australia, is different from Indeed for Ireland, okay? So it's au.indeed. So you can see, you can see the, um, so you can put in any territory if you know a particular territory where you want to apply or just the whole of, of Australia and then you click on find jobs. So you see that the jobs in aged care, you know, will come up and you have 482, you know, jobs in aged care. So you have all the different jobs in aged care. So you would start to look for the jobs and that is how you apply for the jobs. Once you've gotten your positive skills assessment, please make sure you check the, the salary because if the salary is not up to that 50,000, that job will most likely not qualify. Okay, so check that the salary meets the threshold, meets the requirements so that the job will qualify. So this is personal care worker. And they also have a list, like the UK list of sponsored workers. There is a list of care homes and companies that have signed the industry labor agreement. And you can use that list once you've gotten your positive skills assessment to streamline and start applying. So some people are saying that there are no lot of care homes on that list. But what you fail to understand is that on that list, on that list, there are some care homes that have their group care homes. They are what we call group care homes, okay? So those group care homes, they have lots and lots of, you know, branches. You know, some of those care homes, they, they employ over 3,000 to 4,000 staff across the whole of Australia. So even one of those companies can employ more than 1,000 workers in a year. So you can see how much it is. So you don't have to have 1,000 companies. So one company can employ like a lot. Their staff turnover is very high and they are looking to employ. So this is another website where you can, you know, find uh, not just only jobs for care, but any job under the visa subclass, you know, the visa subclass 482 for Australia or the TSS for Australia, what we call TSS. So you can find any job, registered nursing jobs, diesel fitters, you can see technicians, you know, uh, engineers, you can see the price, 80,000 to 100,000 per year, you know. So there are lots and lots of jobs under that visa 482. It's not only carers. So you can see mostly engineering jobs, project managers are also involved. There are lots of engineering opportunities in Australia and New Zealand boiler makers and welders so if you are a welder if you have a trade in welding if you have work experience qualification in any trade at all not only care any trade any trade you have the qualification and you can prove it mechanic you know see this is mechanic eighty thousand to one hundred and ten thousand dollars so as long as you can prove it senior clinical research associate so it's not only carers Okay, registered nurses, 100,000 and above. So you don't need to. So as we are going into 2024, you want to think, you know, what skills do I have? What skills can I get? Look at it. Chef, sponsorship available, 70K to 90K. You know, I was listening to someone that got job as a welder in Finland. You know, this guy said he has been applying, you know, in Finland. You know, but one mistake he made when he was applying for Australia is that he did not have what they were asking for. So when preparation meets opportunity, success is inevitable. Some people are applying, they don't have the requirements. Some people have the requirements, they don't have the willpower, they don't have the strength to apply, they get discouraged. 
after applying, they got five or six rejections or 10 or 20 or 30 rejections, they get discouraged. So you can see that the jobs are there, but it's one thing for you to be noticed. It's one thing for the hiring manager to pick you and it, it just takes that to happen. Even hairstylist, can you see this? Hairstylist, visa sponsorship, fast track approved. I'm showing you live and direct. That is why I said, come on YouTube. Come and see things for yourself. This is not they told me. Come and see for yourself. Fast track, 60,000 to 80,000. So when you are crying and saying, oh, it must be UK, registered nurses, visa sponsorship, you know, how many jobs will you see now? At a point in time, some countries, they got bored of, you know, people asking, oh, every time this heavy diesel fitter, excavator, diesel fitter. So, so it's not only care. That is why I said, I will show you that it's not only care. It's not only nurses. Yes, there are a lot for nurses. There are a lot for care. There are a lot for aged cares. But they are also in other, you know, field, especially engineering, engineering vocational trade. There are a lot as well. Okay, so um, you've seen it for yourself. I'm going to stop sharing for now for Australia and we'll go to New Zealand. Do we have any questions for Australia before we go to New Zealand? I can see that we are over one hour and I don't want to stay much longer. So I will rush, rush and pink. Wait, okay. So we'll rush through now. Okay, so let's see. Any questions? Is anybody interested in Australia? Is anybody thinking of, you know, moving to Australia? Does anybody want to ask me any questions on Australia before we go to New Zealand? And then I will close again with UK because I have to be truthful to you. Out of all these countries, the UK is still my favorite. I've lived in the UK for a long time and it has become home to me. So I can tell you that I like UK. So the UK is still my favorite. Let me know which of these countries is your favorite in the comment section. So let's see your comments. Let's see your comments. Which of these countries, you know, do you want to focus on? You can try all, but which one will be your, you know, your preference? Which one will be your preference? Which one of these countries? So let me see your comments. Oh, Godwin says a welder and boiler maker in USA. And I must tell you, hey, I'm so happy to see this. I like this kind of comment. You know, is the best skill I have ever acquired. Pay six figures after just three to five years experience. Guys, I'm so happy. You know, when someone can come and, you know, say this, People will not tell you this, you know. People never tell you when things are, this is it. You know, Godwin, I think you are the one always sending me links on IG, links and links and links. Because if you are abroad and you know what you want, if you know what you want, but many people don't want to go through this. Many people settle for the status quo. It's not easy to go to school. It's not easy to go and train. Vocational courses are not easy. So you can see for yourself that it's not only care, different trades are in are, 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 are highly required, different trades. And I like this Australia because it is new. Okay, let's see what uh, Fredolin is saying. Mental health support worker and you want to migrate to Australia from UK. So migrating to Australia from UK is faster, is quick. You know, so you can migrate from Australia to UK. I think even on track jobs, there are some New Zealand, you know, you can, there are some partnerships they have. You can mi migrate directly. So it's, it's a fast track as well. Yes. Um, Godwin again said something that is interesting. Most welding jobs are in pet Australia. I did my underwater welding there. I love Australia. Very peaceful. Okay, I love Australia. I will also be visiting Australia in 2024 and I will bring you news from Australia. So Australia is very peaceful. That is nice. So you are hearing from the horse's mouth. You are hearing from the horse's mouth that vocational training is good. You know, some of these things, people just stumble and they are not trained. But here in, you know, the UK, in Western countries, they value vocational training. They value it more than going to the university. 
when somebody tells you that they can be any six figures, five figures, that's why I, I, when I started at the beginning, I say have a career development plan, have a professional development plan. Where am I now? Where do I want to be in the next three to five years? You know, where do I want to get to by God's grace and start to walk towards it, you know, with the help of a mentor, with someone that is with you. Someone said it's not possible for someone that cannot swim. Swimming is not hard now. You can learn how to swim in two weeks. Swimming is just like driving. That is the way I see it. You can learn how to swim as an adult. And you that know you want to go for underwater uh, thing, you will learn how to swim. So swimming is not a problem. Okay, someone is asking, how long does it take after level three diploma to apply for Australia? This is a very good question, and thank you for apply, uh, asking this question. So unlike all the other countries we've discussed, for Australia, you must have your certificate before you apply. You can't apply for Australia without a certificate, okay? So the certificate is very, very important for Australia. You need the certificate. So it's after you finish your level three diploma and you have gotten your certificate, that is when you can apply for Australia. So to all the grammatorial students that are here that have not submitted your assignment, I want to urge you to use this Christmas to find time to submit your assignment so that by January, February, you can make the January batch of certificates we want to claim. Because right now, every month we are claiming certificates. You know, our assessors, they are working very fast now. So if you've been submitting, you will see that they are assessing fast because we know that you need the certificate for Australia. So you, it's after the certificate, Ego. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so um, let's go to New Zealand now. So I will drop the links. I will try and drop the links in the comment section or maybe at the end, I will try and find where to drop the links. So we'll go to Australia, uh, sorry, New Zealand. And then we come back to, to the UK where we started from. So for New Zealand, I've talked about it so much on, um, I think I've talked about it on previous live. I've talked about it on previous live visa. Uh, previous, I said visa, I'm talking of visa, previous live stream. Okay, so we've discussed it. But the reason why we are bringing it up here again is so that I can share screen with you and then you get to see it for yourself. You get to do your own homework because this period, you know, is um, this period you can do a lot of work. You know, you can you have time. People are on holidays. Maybe you're not working so much. So instead of just wasting the holiday season or wasting time this period, you know, eating and drinking is fine. Spending time with family is absolutely wonderful. But by all means, try to reflect on your own development, your progress, and your, you know, your career this season as well. So for New Zealand, the visa is called the Accredited Employer Work Visa. And you can apply for this visa if you have a job offer from an accredited employer the skills and qualifications for the job and a link to the visa application form. So New Zealand, like the UK, also have a list. They have a list of accredited employers. And that list, you can find all employers that are accredited to employ you, okay? So you can stay up to five years. The cost of applying for the visa is just 750 New Zealand dollars. And it usually takes seven weeks is less than people have gotten this visa within three weeks but 80 percent will be processed within seven weeks so in less than two months the visa is out now with this visa you can work in new zealand for at least 30 hours a week you can study for up to three months in any 12 month period or do any study as part of your employment and you can apply for a straight to residence visa after two years, a permanent resident visa after two years, okay? So you can also bring your family with this visa. This visa allows you to bring your dependents if you earn at least 43,000. And trust me, you earn more than that. So now let's look at the, the, the requirements of this visa. So for example, we'll try with a Nigerian passport. Let's put Nigerian. 
let's try with Nigeria passports. If you are here and you are from another country, you know, once I drop the link, you can put your country and just try. So location when you apply, um, let's try, maybe you are also in Nigeria when you apply and we display what you need. So what you need, what you need, you need to have your identity document, which is your passport. Okay, you need your passport. It's very important. Um, your passport must be valid for at least three months after you plan to leave New Zealand. So if you apply for a three months, a three years visa, your passport must be valid for three years, three months. If you're applying for a two years visa, your passport must be valid for two years, three months. So please note that for New Zealand, they, they need long validity, long passport validity. So for your character, you must have a police police certificate for your character. Um, your health, once you've submitted your application, they will ask you to go and do a health check. You need a genuine intention document. A genuine intention is that you are coming to work in New Zealand. So that is your genuine intention. You must have a job offer. So that is a job offer at least 30 hours a week from an accredited employer. And then you must also be qualified. So you see qualification is important. You must show that you are qualified, that you meet the skills, the qualifications, the work experience, and other requirements of the job you have been offered. Evidence of qualification can include original or certified copies of your qualifications. Okay, you need original or certified copies of your qualifications. Evidence the New Zealand Qualification Authority recognizes your qualification. So for Australia, is AQA. For New Zealand, is NZQA. So you must be able to prove that the NZQA recognizes your qualification. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want this video to be too long, but there is an assessment that you need to do, which is called an IQA assessment, if you did not study in certain countries. If your qualification is UK accredited, like our level three diploma, then you don't need to go through that process, okay? So you are exempted from that process. So I will just stop there. I think we've talked about, you know, most things and I will just take questions so that we can end this video. It's already getting too long for me. So, okay, yes, I'll go through the questions. Uh, someone said, what is the difference between three months diploma and six months diploma? Okay, this is a very good question. So let me answer this question. Length of the qualification, when employers or when a home office is looking at your qualification, there are two things they usually look at. So one of the things they will look at is your total qualification time. That's the total time of the qualification and the length of the qualification, guided learning hours. So if your total qualification time is more than 600 hours, it's usually considered to be a proper diploma. So if your total qualification time is like 10 CPD hours, 20 CPD hours, they don't consider those kind of qualifications. Okay, Australia does not consider those kind of qualifications. Online qualifications, they don't consider it. It has to be a proper qualification that is at least 600 hours, 500 hours, 400 hours, six months, you know, a proper three months and above. So for the qualifications that we provide, we are giving you the shortest time you can complete it. That is not actually the length of the qualification. So our three months diploma is meant to be up to six to nine months. But we are saying you can fast track it. It doesn't mean that it's a three month diploma. No, all our diploma are proper diplomas that have a lot of, you know, time. So the three months diploma is non roqf It's not on the regulated qualification, but it's endorsed. Okay, so it's an accredited qualification, but it's not on the regulated qualification framework. That is why it's shorter. But the ROQF and then the, the, the short one, the, the non roqf cannot be used for nothing. So in case you decide in future, maybe when you get to New Zealand or you get to Australia, that you want to go and study nursing or you want to uh, study higher education, you want to progress, you can use that diploma for nursing or for higher education. That's one of the differences. 
But for the six months diploma, it's actually one year, one year to 18 months. Even some colleges in the UK do it two years. You can go and do your finding. You know, if you want to study it in a proper college in the UK, every day you're attending lectures, you are going for your practicals, full-time is 12 months. Part-time is 18 months to two years. Okay, so we just try to fast track it to six months. Doesn't mean that the real length is six months or the real length is three months. So that three months and six months is the fast track, the fastest time you can ever finish it. So the six months diploma is the RQF. And it enables you to progress into nursing, to do higher studies. If you want to use that qualification to go further in academics, you can use it. So that is the key difference. So Ego, I hope I've been able to answer your question. Okay, so Richard is asking what certificate? So we're asking for the diploma in healthcare. We don't do any other course. I know that there are many other brilliant vocational. There's engineering. We have accreditation for engineering, but we are not doing all those ones for now because it's significantly a lot of work to put that together. Okay, so Godwin said that, yes, to do underwater welding, they will train you how to swim in the school in just a week. So swimming is not hard. You can swim, I said two weeks, you know, he said a week. You'll be diving with a gas tank shot too. So it's, swimming is, is not too difficult. Okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. So these are the questions that we have. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, again, we'll just round up now. So we started at the beginning talking about the dental nursing pathway. I said that we will check to see if we still have any more spaces because we had a lot of interest and I was going to prioritize grammatorial students that have a proven track record. Doesn't mean that we are not going to take any other person. So if you are not grammatorial student and you qualify, you have a diploma in dental nursing or you have a dental nursing degree, by all means, you know, reach out to us and we will see how, you know, if we have any spaces for you. Uh, we talked about, you know, what dental nurses can do. I shared with you on track jobs, you know, the jobs that exist. You can go on Indeed. You can do your background research. You know, the jobs, are they jobs? Dental nursing is on the shortage occupation list. So, yes, there are a lot of jobs in this field. So, um, we also talked about, you know, the package and what it entails. Uh, then we moved ahead to Ireland. So um, Lou is saying, thank you uh, for the RQF six months. Where do I do practical assessment? Do you assist people not in Nigeria? Yes, we assist people that are not in Nigeria. We have several students that are in the Middle East. We have students in other African countries. We have students in Kenya. We have students in South Africa. So if you are not in Nigeria, please reach out to us. What we will do is we'll give you a placement letter will give you the scheme of, not the scheme of work, the specification. And the specification is the TQUK booklet. We'll give that to you. And you will take it to care homes, uh, maybe residential care homes, care agencies, hospitals in your location. And you will tell them that you are studying on this course and you want to, you need to do a voluntary work-based experience with them. And you explain to them, we'll send you an introduction letter. So this is how our other students in countries, in other countries, and even in other states in Nigeria have been able to get placement. So the student in South Africa, this is how she got a placement in Kenya, in other countries. This is how we're able to partner with hospitals in those countries. And, you know, our students, we are able to get a placement. So Lou, if you want to do the course, you can reach out to us and we'll give you more details on how we can work out the practical side of things. Okay, so um, let's look at question from Olayemi. Said, please, what do you have for non-health fields as mentioned earlier? So I don't know what time you joined Olayemi, but we talked about you know other fields uh, for Australia. We saw mostly in engineering. So there is a lot mostly in engineering. Um, for UK, there is a lot in IT, business analyst, if you can do the job, 
even though care seems to be, you know, widely announced. But like I said, it's not only care, you know, dental nursing is still on the shortage occupation list. But if you want us to look at it, if you are interested in UK, can also look at, you know, other jobs on the shortage occupation list, even though I wanted to close now. And bear in mind that the government said they want to revisit this list. They want to revisit this list in, um, in April, but at least it is still what it is. So let's look at it. Please let me know when you can see my screen. So uh, this shortage occupation list for the United Kingdom was updated on the 7th of August, 2023. So it's relatively a new update. It's not that old. It was recently updated. So just give me a thumbs up. Just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. And if you are just joining and you have not liked this video, please like and share this video. So we can check the jobs on the shortage occupation list like if you are into health services, public health in the UK, so you qualify, you're on this list, residential day and domiciliary care managers, chemical scientists, only jobs in nuclear industry. So if you are in the nuclear industry and you're a chemical scientist to qualify, biological scientist and biochemist, all jobs. If you're a biological scientist, you qualify. Physical scientist, only only the following jobs in construction related ground engineering, engineering geologist, hydrogeologist, geophysicist, physical scientist in all this, you know, social and humanities scientist, only archaeologist, civil engineers. So there are lots of jobs. You know, most of you will know by now that my background is in civil engineering. And I cannot overemphasize it. Civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, design engineers, production and process engineers, engineering professionals not elsewhere classified. Let me tell you what you need to get these jobs. If you want to get these jobs, just go and look for the software. If you are any of this engineering, Look for the software that they use. I'm a civil engineer, so I can tell you the software that is selling in the civil engineering industry. If you know how to use those softwares, it will not be more than three to six months before you will land a job. I know they are looking for engineers. They are in huge shortage of engineers. So those are the software. Find out which softwares are they using in that in your industry. Learn those softwares, become a master of using those softwares, put those softwares on your CV and apply for your engineering jobs. Now, I posted on IT business analysts and, you know, IT and business analysts, you know, it's just very few slots left. People have sent their, their CVs and their passports. Some people are asking me, why would they send it? If you like, send. If you like, don't send. The job is going, going, gone. So there are, you know, there are jobs in this, in this field. Programmers, software development professionals. Hmm, this one is another hot kick. If you're a programmer, if you are a software, you know, developer, they are recruiting massively. Web design development professionals, information technology, vet veterinaries are in high demand. Uh, architects as well. But for architecture, you know, you need, to be UK qualified, you need to have gone through the RIBA stages, RIBA stage one, two, and three. So that's why some of these professions may be a bit tricky because you need to qualify. So if you're an architect, I have experience as an engineer also of how architecture works in the UK. You can book a one-to-one -one with me and I'll be more than happy to take you through. Quality control and planning engineer. If you're in any engineering and you want to just find out more, you can book a one-to-one -one with me and I will, you know, look at your CV and I will, you know, advise you and give you a strategy, you know, a roadmap on what to do. If you're a laboratory technician, you know, artist, dancers, you're in any of the creative arts, uh, I don't know much about those areas, so I can't advise. Please don't book if you are in creative arts. I don't know much. It's engineering, you know, that's my field. I can advise in those areas. So musicians, art officers. So you can see all these bricklayers. So if you are a bricklayer, if you are in construction, <laughs> it's something I can also, you know, 
do a one-to-one -one with you, do a strategy. Maybe in the new year, we can do like Zoom sessions of all these different trades, you know, bricklayers, I can tell you 100% bricklayers, masons, roofers, roof tilers, carpenters and joiners, anything construction, I know about it. And there is a huge demand, not just healthcare. Huge, huge. When I say huge, there is massive demand in this field. Plasterers, you know, anything construction related, there is huge demand. And of course, our dear, oh dear care workers and home carers, 6145, this is it. It has been flooded, but yes, yeah, 6146 senior care workers is still on the list. And then fishing and other agriculture trades. So as we speak, these are still on the list of shortage occupation. Teachers are still on the list. So education, you know, uh, secondary school teachers, you know, are on the list and we can do a session on Zoom, maybe before New Year or in the New Year, where we, you know, take time to go through each, you know, step by step, or it will be a paid session. So we can go through, or you can send me, you know. So um, Damilo, Olayemi, we'll get through to you if you, if you have sent your CV for the business analyst, we'll review it and we'll let you know if we are, progressing with it to the next level and what the package entails okay we'll let you know what it entails okay guys so thank you very much uh in the intent that we don't have any more questions we'll call it a day here um we're on holiday now i'm sure most people are at home now so i'll have more time to come live i'll have more time to answer your questions or for one-to-ones or to do you know, to run this kind of sessions. But good night. Thank you, everyone, for staying true to the end. Do have a lovely evening. Have a blessed week and see you all soon. Take care. Bye.